I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. It's good news out of Washington for those who live and drive in the New Windsor area. Senator Charles Schumer has announced that the Federal Highway Administration will break ground on a new Forge Hill Road bridge next year. Federal Highway officials have also agreed to install a traffic light at the nearby Route 94 Butternut Drive intersection that was made dangerous by the increased traffic forced through the area because of the closing of the bridge more than a year ago. The Forge Hill Road span sustained severe damage as the result of Hurricane Irene, including a 50-foot deep sinkhole. Schumer says work to replace the bridge will begin next year with the project to receive full federal funding. The preliminary word from the scene, the two-alarm fire is suspicious. Firemen from the city of Newburgh got the call shortly after 8 this morning. A condemned and vacant house at 187 Carson Avenue was ablaze. And the fact that the two-family house was boarded up made attempts to extinguish the flames even more challenging. Uh, we got into the building and found that the uh, upper floor, the attic, which is also a livable space, was uh, heavily involved in fire, but because this building um, was, was uh, condemned and boarded up, uh, it really contained a lot of the heat and smoke for a long time. When we opened it up, it was heavy fire on the top floor. Um, we started a couple lines in there, got driven out by the high heat, and given that it's uh, a vacant building, we backed out to knock it down from the street. There were no utilities hooked up to the house. The next door neighbor told us that uh, people had often broken into the vacant house to take up a temporary residence something confirmed by fire investigators at the scene. There's evidence to suggest there were people squatting in the basement area. Uh, we actually found um, uh, couches arranged, you know, like a living space, and the candles were lit. Uh, and uh, those candles had nothing to do with the, uh, the fire itself. Uh, there's really no fire damage at all in the, uh, the basement area. No one got hurt. The quick response from firefighters kept the flames from spreading to the house next door. Firemen from West Point and the Stewart Air Guard assisted. On scene, a Chief Vatter said the residents will probably be declared a total loss and that the fire appears to have started on the top floor. A Port Jervis man will be arraigned in Orange County Court tomorrow following his indictment on charges connected to the death of his 13-month-old son. An Orange County grand jury has handed up a five-count indictment against 22-year-old Brett Canoff, charging him with two counts of second-degree murder, two counts of manslaughter, and endangering the welfare of a child. Police arrested Canoff following an investigation into the September 24th death of his infant son Cameron. Prosecutors say Canoff smothered the infant with a blanket to stop him from crying. Relatives in the Ball Street home discovered the unresponsive child, but arriving emergency responders could not revive him. Canoff continues to be held without bail in Orange County Jail pending tomorrow's arraignment proceedings. State police investigators say unsafe speed was the probable cause of an all-terrain vehicle crash that claimed the life of a Sullivan County man Sunday afternoon. Police say an ATV driven by 31-year-old Charles Wells of Woodburn ran off East Mongop Road in the town of Liberty and slammed into several trees. A witness called 911, alerting state police to the crash. Wells was later pronounced dead at Catskill Regional Medical Center in Harris. Last week, Ulster County Health Department officials confirmed two cases of Legionnaire's disease at the Governor Clinton Senior Housing Complex in Kingston. The disease is spread through bacteria in water vapor, and those most at risk of contracting the potentially fatal disease are those 65 and older who develop symptoms similar to pneumonia. A new water filtration system has been installed at Clinton Housing since the Legionnaire's cases were confirmed, and seniors living there are currently under water restrictions. Reporter Jeremiah Horrigan paid a visit to the housing complex to speak with residents about the situation. Look for his report here at Record Online and in the Times-Herald Record. Now, back in 2010, two people were diagnosed with Legionnaires at Golden Hill Infirmary in Kingston. In that case, one of the two elderly women died. And could Tuxedo be back in the mix when it comes to a place for Greenwood Lake students to attend high school? 
Well, tonight, the Greenwood Lake School Board could decide whether or not to add Tuxedo's George Baker High School to its list of options that uh, currently include high schools in Warwick and Chester. Greenwood Lake residents have been lobbying to have the board reconsider Tuxedo. And Tuxedo School Board uh, has uh, decided, decided last month to lower its proposed tuition rate in an attempt to get the Greenwood Lake Board to reconsider its planned student shift to either Chester or Warwick next school year. Greenwood Lake students currently make up 80% of the student body at Tuxedo's Baker High School. More clouds are in the Wednesday forecast, but Thursday could be the nicest day of the week weather-wise. Uh, Wednesday will be mostly cloudy with the chance of a passing shower. The highs will reach the mid-60s. Thursday will be mostly sunny, but on the cool side, with temperatures expected to top out in the low 60s. Make Record Online your source for online news wherever and whenever it breaks. And read all the stories and features important to you in tomorrow's Times Herald Record. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.